So we're looking at uh, one of the loveliest images of the Virgin Mary with Jesus, in my opinion. And that's the image on the right called Madonna and Child with two angels. Now, Madonna means really Our Lady, again, um, like Notre Dame in France or French. So this is by the artist whose self-portrait is on the left, Fra Filippo Lippi. Fra identifies him as a monk. And so that's what that part of his name is a reference to. But we're going to be looking at the painting on the right. So we'll start with context here. Um, the patron, again, is the Medici family, who I've mentioned previous in previous videos. Um, Medici family, again, a prominent banking family in Florence. They commissioned Lippi uh, wanting to show their faith, their devotion, their uh, faith in Christianity, and of course, also their wealth. And it's um, a time period of growing wealth and status for merchants. And the Medicis are, again, one of the most powerful families in Florence. And so they wanted to hire Lippi, who was a very famous artist at the time, and it kind of killed two birds with one stone, showing their faith and their power all in one painting. Now, Lippi is an interesting character, incredibly talented, um, but you know, rumors abound with him. Uh, one of the most famous stories, and one that is kind of appropriate to this painting, is there's a rumor and legend that he fell in love with a nun and abducted her and then eventually ends up marrying her. But some say that they both fell in love with each other and ran off together. Regardless, uh, he is potentially using her as the model for the Virgin Mary in this particular painting. Um, he is influential for our purposes and one of the main ways is he taught as a student uh, the artist Botticelli, who will go on and we will study the birth of Venus together. And then some, and then also link da Vinci's famous, famous painting, the Mona Lisa, to this particular art piece as an influence with the background and some of the painting techniques. So there's not really much other context. I think why we are studying this particular piece is just the change in how the Virgin Mary and Jesus are presented. And so that's what we're going to be talking about here. Again, remember with the Renaissance, you're in a time period of great humanism. Again, the uh, turn on uh, our attention to the human experience. And for so long in the Middle Ages, the Virgin Mary has been, for the most part, slightly beyond the human uh, she seems, again, greatly divine, and the relationship between Jesus and the Virgin Mary has been uh, more of her as like the Theotokos or the Seda Sepiente, you know, the throne of wisdom and the bearer of Christ, kind of this I'm holding him and, and symbolically representing, uh, you know, the divine and Christ is the judge, and it's not this mother and child image. It's more of them as divine beings. But here with Fra Filippo Lippi's piece, you have a switch to a very humanistic view of Mary and Jesus. It's a mother and her son. That almost takes precedence over the divine nature of the two. Because one, if you look at where her halo is, it's a very thin line. The the halo on both Jesus and the Virgin Mary are barely visible. Eventually, they're going to disappear completely in other works that come after. And then the throne that she's sitting on in the lower left-hand corner, the bottom corner there, is barely visible as well. So she doesn't come across as much as the Queen of Heaven anymore. Uh, so that's a nice, interesting change that we have here with Lippi. Um, there's a great sense of depth in this painting, and you kind of have to go back and link that to the Roman painting styles. Remember, painting style two, when you introduce depth, one of the ways you do that is with atmospheric perspective. Things farther away, cooler colors, less detail, things that are closer to you, more vivid. 
And that definitely applies with this piece. There's overlapping of figures. And one of the most clever ways he achieves depth is to paint a window frame, which kind of comes across as like it's the frame for the painting. And the Virgin Mary's arm is in front of that frame. And you have shadows depicted on the frame on the like the left lower half of the painting. The angel's wings on the right hand side go over that frame. So it's quite a clever way to suggest depth as well. Um, people talk about the tone of this painting being playful, uh, emotional, kind of a, a tender tone to it. And you have the Virgin Mary kind of uh, tor facing toward her son, which is not the usual kind of her facing forward to the viewer while he sits on her lap facing forward. Here they both turn in to each other where Jesus is reaching to his mother uh, and looking at her. It's, it's just this nice, very mother-son moment, mother and child moment. And uh, definitely different from the solemn kind of formal tones of the Middle Ages images of the Virgin Mary and Jesus. Lippi is also uh, quite well known for his delicate lines, which you can see in the hair of both figures, the veil of the Virgin Mary, this transparent, the little light see-through kind of painting style he has. So there's a delicateness to it, but at the same time, the figures are solid, modeled, very three-dimensional figures as well. I'm going to go on here to show you some close-ups of the images. Uh, some say that the pearls or the jewels in uh, the Virgin Mary's veil and on her forehead are a symbol of her divinity and also her purity. And then the um, wanted you to see the color work and the detailing in the hair on both Jesus and on the left with the Virgin Mary. And the angels too are their playful, mischievous, mischievous. They come across as children would come across versus kind of the really strange kind of part adult, part child just because of their size uh, images we've seen in the Middle Ages. We're starting to get this sense of a real natural looking baby who's not doing a judge and teacher symbol with his hands either. Great modeling under the chin with the Virgin Mary on the left. And the shadows are just fantastic here. The detail in the landscape behind her is quite spectacular as well. And then just so that we hit you know, the, the difference uh, clearly, you know, the one on the left, the Virgin and Child enthroned you know, between Saints Theodore and George, and now on the right, both fantastic. One is not better than the other. They are just incredibly different, yet similar. So it's good to kind of remind ourselves of the flat, elongated, pattern-based, formal quality of an icon on the left-hand side versus the still serious, but now more human side of our Renaissance piece on the right with Fra Filippo Lippi. So I would say with our um, function here, it's definitely religious. It almost comes across like a portrait, like an informal portrait of a, just a person, but we're still gonna stick with religion being our function. And in formal quality, I would use space because there's such a great sense of depth with this, how he overlaps the figures and how he creates this frame that looks like the frame of a painting and you know, of a window at the same time. It's a really clever kind of way to create that sense of depth and space, foreground, middle ground, and background. So again, that is our Renaissance piece, Madonna and Child with Two Angels, by Fra Filippo Lippi.